Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Home Worship Video Resource. I'm G. Stephen Simons, and I'm really glad you could join me for this video. I'm standing on the bank of the Broad River in the Cherokee Ford Recreation Area, just outside of Gaffney, South Carolina. And it is here on Shabbat, y'all willing, at 2 p.m., that Triumph of Truth will host another Shabbat Water Immersion Gathering. I'm gonna be teaching the Bible and when I finish up delivering this powerful, transformative message, I'm gonna take every person who has the desire to receive the circumcision of the heart, to receive the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient into the river and I'm going to water immerse them. So family, be in prayer for the success of our gathering. We wanna bear much fruit and I wanna be able to share with you a really great report next week. I wanna remind everyone that when the sun sets on 1013 through sunset 1014 is Yom HaKippurim. It is the day of atonement. It is a high Sabbath and it's a fast day. We're gonna be fasting because Yom HaKippurim represents the judgment of fire that is coming in the future. So we're gonna be fasting and praying for a great harvest of beings in the days that we're living in and that many, 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 many people will come to belief in Yeshua with a belief that produces obedience so that they can miss the judgment of fire that's in the days ahead. And so keep in mind, sunset 1013 through sunset 1014 is Yom HaKippurim. After Sukkot, y'all willing, Triumph and Truth will be traveling through the deep south, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. So if you live in any of those states and would like to be water immersed or attend a gathering, send me an email at info at triumphanttruth.global and I'll get right back to you and we can begin a conversation about a possible gathering near you. All right, it is time to blast our shofars. I hope you have your shofar. When we come back in the next segment, we will sound the alarm to teshiva together. All right, family, it's time to quote the Shema. We'll place the verses right up on your screen. We're gonna begin with Deuteronomy chapter six and verse four. And first we'll say it in Hebrew, and then we'll say it in English. Let's say it together. Shema Israel, Ya Eloheinu, Ya Echad. Hear, O Israel, Ya our Elohim, Ya is one. And you shall love Ya your Elohim with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your might. And then we go to the second Shema found in Torah, which is Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning with verse 18, let's say it together. I shall raise up for them a prophet like you out of the midst of their brothers, and I shall put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be the man who does not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. And then we go to Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning with verse 25. Let's say it together. And I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I cleanse you, and I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings, and you shall do them. Hallelujah.
All right, brothers and sisters, it is time to pray for the Jewish people. We are going to stand up and face in the direction of the land of Israel. And with all that's going on in the Middle East and the hatred of the Jewish people in the world, we as believers in and followers of the Jewish Messiah need to rise up in prayer and intercession and pray for the safety and well-being of the Jewish people, for their protection in this time of war, also for the shalom of Jerusalem, as well as for the salvation of the Jewish people. We're also going to be praying for the ingathering of the nations, as well as for our gatherings, wherever they may be, worldwide. Let's pray. Abba, we bless you and praise you. We worship you and adore you. There is none like you, majestic and set apartness, awesome in praises, still doing wonders in the earth today. We are your children, and we are facing the land of Israel. You have placed a deep sense of love in our hearts for the Jewish people. And so we are praying for their safety. We are praying for their protection in this season of war. We are praying for their well-being. And we are praying for the shalom of Jerusalem. We look forward to the day when Yeshua returns as Prince of Shalom and establishes Shalom in Israel and in the nations of the world. Until then, we are going to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We ask that you would give great wisdom and understanding to those who are making decisions in the land, that they would make their decisions based upon your will. As Yeshua taught us to pray, your reign come, your desire be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are praying for the protection of the innocent ones in war. We are praying for the safety of the hostages while they are in captivity and for their speedy release. We are praying that you would reveal yourself and your son in a powerful and wonderful way by way of revelation through your Ruach HaKodesh. And we pray that as the Jewish people open up the set-apart scriptures and read, that you would open up their eyes to see Yeshua as master and Mashiach of Israel, that they would call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, which means the salvation of Yah, and receive a justification and an empowerment that leads to true Torah obedience. And we pray for a great harvest of beings amongst the Jewish people, that many, 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 many Jewish people and citizens of the land would come to know Yeshua as Master and Mashiach of Israel. We also pray for the nations of the world. We know that you're gathering up Ephraim from every nation under heaven, and we are so thankful and blessed to have a part in this wonderful and gathering. We pray that you would continue to bless this ministry, lay your hand of power upon this ministry, anoint the messages that go forth each week as they go forth throughout all the world. We pray that you would inspire people to press play and watch the videos and that they would be convicted and they would call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, to receive a justification that leads to true Torah obedience. We also pray for our gatherings worldwide. We ask you to move powerfully in our midst. We ask that you would heal the sick, that you would lift the fallen, that you would encourage the downcast, that you would do the supernatural in our midst. We pray that all that we do and say will bring great esteem to you in the name of your son, Yeshua. We pray that even today, we would receive a greater portion of your spirit to go forth in strength and power and proclaim Yeshua and Teshuvah and Yeshua's lifestyle of Torah obedience and the empowerment that comes through water immersion everywhere where we live and that you would continue to bless this ministry as we go from place to place and from state to state, water immersing all along the way. And we pray that scores more people will hear this message and be empowered and be equipped to love you the way you want to be loved through obedience. 
We just thank you, Father, for this wonderful set apart day and all the blessings that you pour out upon us as we worship you as creator and redeemer. And all these things we ask in the wonderful and powerful name of your son and our master and Mashiach Yeshua. Amen and amen.
It's time for prayer, and I want to share with you a wonderful psalm. This is Psalms 25, and it's loaded with truth about prayer. Allow this psalm 
to prepare you for this time of prayer and intercession. It says, to you, O Yah, I lift up my being. I lift up my prayers to you. O my Elohim, in you I have put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who are treacherous without cause be ashamed. Show me your ways, O Yah. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the Elohim of my deliverance. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Yah, your compassion and your loving commitments, for they are from everlasting. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my transgressions. According to your loving commitment, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Yah, good and straight is Yah. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. He guides the meek ones in right ruling. And he teaches the meek ones his way. All the paths of Yah are loving commitment and truth. To those who guard his covenant and his witnesses. For your name's sake, O Yah, you shall pardon my crookedness, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears Yah. He teaches him in the way he should choose. His life dwells in good, and his seed inherits the earth. The secret of Yah is with those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward Yah, for he brings my feet out of the net. Turn your face to me and show me favor, for I am lonely and afflicted. The distresses of my heart have enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my toil and forgive all my sins. See how many my enemies have become, and they hate me with a violent hatred. Oh, guard my life and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I have taken refuge in you. Let integrity and straightness guard me, for I have waited for you. Redeem Israel, O Elohim, out of all his distresses.
Restore us again Cause your face to shine Return to us, oh yeah And we shall be saved We shall be saved I want to encourage you in your giving and take you over to Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to begin with verse 19. And this is Yeshua teaching something really powerful about giving. It says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. In other words, Yeshua is saying, Don't be earthly focused concerning your resources. I realize that we all have needs and we have to provide for ourselves and our families. But Yeshua doesn't want that to be our main focus. We need to have something greater, something larger, something heavenly in view. He goes on to say, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Think about the heavenly things. Invest in the heavenly things. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Notice, for where your treasure is, where you put your money, where you invest, there your heart shall be also. And so Yeshua is teaching that giving is a matter of the heart. And your giving habits actually reveal where your heart is. If your money is going toward recreation, if it's going toward clothing, if it's going toward automobiles, if it's going toward a hobby, 
That's where your heart is. But if your money is going toward the work of Yeshua on the earth, if your money is going toward the expansion of the reign of Elohim, if it's going toward empowering ministries to be able to go and proclaim the good news message of Yeshua and Teshuvah and Yeshua's lifestyle of Torah obedience and the empowerment that comes through water immersion, then that's where your heart is. And the scripture says, Elohim loves a joyous giver. He loves someone who invests in the work, invests in the ministry with joy. There's nothing more satisfying than investing in the work with joy. Blessings come from the Father. It's a blessing to know that your investment is going to bless others and empower others and expand the reign. You are investing into something that's bigger than yourself, and your account grows in the heavens. And so on the judgment day, the one who's been appointed to judge the living and the dead will be able to look into your account and be able to judge your heart, where your heart has been. So I praise y'all for all of you who are giving consistently. You are helping to make this ministry happen for scores and scores and scores of people who are hearing this powerful, transformative message and being water immersed and receiving the empowerment that comes through water immersion. I praise Yah for you. I know where your heart is. And others, I want to encourage you, do the mature thing and begin investing in the work of Elohim on the earth. Investing into others. Begin to invest in the expansion of the reign. Invest into something that's greater than yourselves. And you will begin to reap the reward of that. And it will reveal that your heart is in the right place. And so I want you to keep these things in mind. And y'all bless you in your giving. All right, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to John chapter 10. We're going to begin with verse 23 in just a moment. And we're going to be asking and answering the question, did Yeshua claim to be Elohim or the son of Elohim? Many people, when they read through John chapter 10, come to the conclusion that Yeshua was claiming to be the father. He was claiming to be Elohim especially when they read verse 30, where Yeshua said, I and my father are one. They say, see, that's evidence that Yeshua claimed to be the father. He claimed to be Elohim. Well, we're going to read verses 23 through 40 in context and answer the question, did Yeshua claim to be Elohim or the son of Elohim? Verse 23, and Yeshua was walking in the set-apart place in the ports of Shelemo are the ports of Solomon. So the Yehudim, or the Jews, surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, say to us plainly. And so in context, they're not even questioning Yeshua about whether he claims to be Elohim. They are questioning him about if he's claiming to be the Messiah. Are you the Messiah? If so, say to us plainly. Yeshua answered them, I have told you, and you do not believe. I've been telling you all along that I am the Messiah, but you won't believe it. The works that I do in my Father's name are in my Father's authority. They bear witness concerning me, the signs, the wonders, the miracles that I'm doing in my Father's name. Those signs, those miracles... They bear witness of the fact that I am the chosen one. I am the Messiah. I represent the Father on the earth. I am the anointed human being who will sit upon the throne of Sovereign David as sovereign of the whole earth. Now, I want to take you over to three verses that clearly 
make a distinction between Yeshua and the Father. The first one is John chapter 5 and verse 30. Yeshua says here, of myself, I am unable to do any matter. I can't do anything by myself. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own desire. I'm not seeking my own will, but the desire of the Father who sent me. You cannot be the one who sins and also the one who is sent. There is a clear distinction between Yeshua and the Father in this verse. And then go over to John chapter 9. And we're going to pick up with verse 4. John chapter 9 and verse 4. Yeshua says here, It is necessary for me to work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one is able to work. Again, he is working the works of him who sent him. We see two different distinct persons in that verse as well. And then John chapter 8, verse 29, Yeshua says here, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. I'm in complete submission to him and the works that I do are his works. I do what pleases him. And because I do what pleases him, the father has not left me alone. He's always with me. Again, we see two distinct persons, Yeshua and the father. And so Yeshua was doing his works according to the authority of the father. Let's go back over to John chapter 10 and pick up with verse 26. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. I've been telling you that I'm the Messiah, but you won't believe it. And you don't believe it because you're not of my sheep, as I said to you. He's talking about what he had said earlier. We'll go over to John 10, starting with verse 1. Yeshua said, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up by another way, that one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And so Yeshua is saying, I've been telling you I'm the Messiah, but you don't believe because you are not of my sheep. You're not my sheep. Verse 28, and I give them everlasting life, and they shall by no means ever perish. In other words, perish spiritually. And no one shall snatch them out of my hand. And he tells the reason that he made that statement is in the next verse. My father who has given them to me, so the father gave him his sheep, is greater than all. So that would include Yeshua in that statement of Yeshua. My father who has given them to me, given me my sheep, is greater than all. And he includes himself in that. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So he's saying no one can snatch them out of my hand because my father is the one who gave them to me and my father is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my father's hand. Again, how can you conflate the two together? How can you say Yeshua is claiming to be the father when all of these verses clearly separate Yeshua and the father? And then we get to verse 30. I and my father are one. Again, they say, see, that's evidence that Yeshua is claiming to be the father. 
But in reality, in context, we see that Yeshua is in complete submission to the Father. He doesn't judge except that he hears from the Father. He doesn't do anything except that he does what the Father desires for him to do. Even the words that he speaks are not his own. He is the prophet like Moshe in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 18 and 19. The Father has placed his words in Yeshua's mouth. Hallelujah. Yeshua is not only the Mashiach, the Messiah, the anointed human being, but he's also the Shaliach, which is the representative of the Father on the earth. And so when Yeshua says here, I and my Father are one, he's actually talking about the fact that he and his Father are one in purpose. They are one in mission because he's not doing his own desire, but he's doing the desire of his Father. He's in complete submission to his Father. I and my Father are one in purpose. We are one in mission. Again, the Yehudim picked up stones to stone him. Yeah, they confused what he was saying. They misunderstood him. They thought he was claiming to be the Father. They thought he was claiming to be Elohim. And so they picked up stones to stone him. But that's not what he was saying. He was saying, I'm one with my Father in purpose and in mission. Now, let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter 13 and read the first five verses. And this is going to set the context for the Jews as they were thinking about what to do with what Yeshua was saying, even though they were misunderstanding him. There is a context to it. Deuteronomy chapter 13, starting with verse 1. When there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he shall give you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder shall come true, of which he has spoken to you, saying, Let us go after other mighty ones, which you have not known, and serve them. Do not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for Yah, your Elohim, is trying you to know whether you love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being, walk after Yah, your Elohim, and fear Him, and guard His commands, and obey His voice, and serve Him, and cling to Him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams is put to death because he has spoken apostasy against Yah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, of the land of Egypt, and ransomed you from the house of bondage to make you stray from the way in which Yah, your Elohim, commanded you to walk. Thus you shall purge the evil from your midst. And so they were thinking that Yeshua was claiming to be Elohim. Yes, he had done miracles. Yes, he had done mighty works. But according to Deuteronomy chapter 13, if Yeshua taught something different, if he said, let's go after false deities, or in essence, if he claimed himself to be Elohim, then they would have a right and an obligation to put him to death. And so that's the background. That's what's going on behind the scenes in their minds as they're listening to what he's saying. They thought he was claiming to be Elohim. And so they thought that was blasphemy. And they were picking up stones to stone him. It says again, the Yehudim picked up stones to stone him. Yeshua answered them. Now we're going to find out whether or not Yeshua was claiming to be Elohim or the son of Elohim. Yeshua answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. Because of which of these works do you stone me? Why are you stoning me? I'm doing the works of the Father. Which one of the works that I've done are you stoning me for? The Yehudim answered him, saying, We do not stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy. And because you, being a man, make yourself Elohim. Well, they got the man part right. 
but he was not claiming to be Elohim. They thought he was. They were getting ready to stone him because they thought he was claiming to be Elohim. But he was not claiming to be Elohim, and he's going to prove it. Are you Elohim? There's only two ways to answer, yes or no. And he's going to answer. Let's see what he says. Yeshua answered them, Is it not written in your own Torah? I said you are Elohim. That's Psalms 82.6. So in Psalms 82.6, Yah, the Creator, actually speaks to the judges of Israel and calls them Elohim. Elohim in a lesser sense. Yah in Scripture at times calls men Elohim. If you're a representative of the Father, if you are a judge who judges on behalf of the Father, if you make right rulings on behalf of the Father, if you've been anointed by the Father to carry out the Father's plan and purpose, if you're a sovereign of Israel, you could be called Elohim in a lesser sense. Now, to bear that out, I want to take you over to Exodus chapter 4, beginning with verse 14. It says this, And the displeasure of Yah burned against Moshe, and he said, Is not Aharon the Lewite your brother? I know that he speaks well, and see, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he shall be glad in his heart. And you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I am with your mouth and with his mouth. And I shall teach you what to do. And he shall speak for you to the people. And it shall be that he shall be a mouth for you, and you shall be an Elohim for him. And so Moshe was considered an Elohim by Aharon, and that was the will of the Father. Now go over to Exodus chapter 7, and we'll read verse 1. It says, So Yah said to Moshe, See, I have made you an Elohim to Paro, and Aharom, your brother, is your prophet. And so Moshe is called an Elohim because he was a shaliach. He was a representative of the Father to the people. And so the Father calls him an Elohim. He was an Elohim to Aharon, and he was an Elohim to Paro. And so let's go over to Psalms 82, and let's read that psalm because that's the context of Yeshua's argument, so to speak, his defense of himself. Verse 1, Elohim stands in the congregation of Ael. So Elohim is the Father. The Father stands in the midst of his people. He judges in the midst of the Elohim. In other words, Yah is judging his judges. He's rebuking his judges for judging perversely. It says he judges in the midst of the Elohim. So the psalmist is calling the judges Elohim. How long would you judge perversely and show partiality to the wrong? Selah. Give right ruling to the poor and fatherless. Do right to the afflicted and needy. Rescue the poor and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wrong. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. So again, this is Yah judging the judges. They were judging perversely. They were showing partiality to the wrong. And they were disregarding the most needy, the defenseless ones. 
And so Yah is saying to the judges, you need to judge rightly. To represent me, you must judge correctly with right ruling. It says, give right ruling to the poor and the fatherless. Do right to the afflicted and needy. Rescue the poor and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wrong. And then it says, all the foundations of the earth are shaken. In other words, because of your misbehavior, your misdeeds, your unrighteous rulings, the foundation of the earth is shaken. So we need to make a correction here. And you judges need to begin to judge with right ruling. Then it goes on to say, I, I said you are Elohim. And all of you are sons of the Most High. And so it's the Father who has exalted these judges to this position of representing him. And they are called Elohim in the lesser sense. They're also called sons of the Most High. So these representatives of the Father are called Elohim in the lesser sense, and they're called sons of the Most High. It goes on to say, but as men you die. So you're just men, and you're going to die. And fall as one of the heads. Even though the Father has exalted them to a place of judgment over the people, and they're called Elohim in the lesser sense, and sons of the Most High, they are still men, and they're going to die. And then in the final verse, this is speaking of Yah, Elohim, our Creator. Arise, O Elohim, judge the earth, for you shall possess all the nations. So this is the context of what Yeshua is saying in his defense. They picked up stones to stone him because they thought he was claiming to be Elohim. Now let's continue to read in John chapter 10. Yeshua answered them, is it not written in your own Torah? I said, you are Elohim. If he called them Elohim, to whom the word of Elohim came, and it is impossible for the scripture to be broken, do you say of him whom the Father set apart and sent into the world, speaking of himself, you are blaspheming because I said I am the son of Elohim? He didn't even claim to be Elohim in the lesser sense. He claimed to be the son of Elohim. Do you say of him whom the Father set apart and sent into the world, you are blaspheming? Because I said, I am the son of Elohim. If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. In other words, we are one in purpose. We are one in mission. And so again, Yeshua is not claiming to be Elohim. He's not claiming to be the Father. He didn't even claim to have the lesser Elohim status. He claimed to be the son of Elohim. He said, I've been set apart by the Father. I've been sent into the world to accomplish His will, to do His works, to speak His words. And are you going to stone me because I call myself the son of Elohim? when even the judges were called Elohim and the sons of the Most High? So he's not claiming to be the Father at all. He's actually saying the Father set me apart and sent me into the world to perform His mission. I'm one with the Father in mission and purpose. Therefore, they were seeking again to seize Him. But he went forth out of their hand and went once more to the other side of the Yardane, to the place where Yochanan was immersing at first, and there he stayed. So it's really, really interesting when you look at this 
chapter, we see a dynamic that is repeated in the day that we're living in. We see that Yeshua is saying, I am the Messiah. I am the Messiah. I am the anointed human being. I am called by my Father to do His works and His will in the earth. My Father has chosen me to sit upon the throne of Sovereign David to rule over this earth for a thousand years of Shalom. I am the Messiah. And the Jews misunderstand some of the things that he says. Again, in verse 30, I and my Father are one. He was saying one in purpose, one in mission. But they immediately misunderstood that verse and thought he was claiming to be Elohim. They reached down and picked up stones to stone him. And in his defense, he clearly states that if the judges could be called Elohim in a lesser sense, and the sons of the Most High, then why do they want to stone him? Because he is claiming to be the son of Elohim. Why do you want to stone me for that? And then it goes on to say they were looking for a way to seize him. So they weren't going to stone him because Yeshua convinced them that he wasn't claiming to be Elohim, but the son of Elohim. But they were still looking for a reason to seize him because they didn't like what he was saying. And so we see here people who misunderstood Yeshua, were saying that he was claiming to be Elohim and they wanted to stone him. And in the day that we're living in, there are people who are saying that Yeshua claimed to be Elohim and there are people who are saying that Yeshua claimed to be the son of Elohim, the Messiah. And many times the ones who are claiming that Yeshua said he is Elohim, they're picking up stones. And they want to stone those who are saying that Yeshua claimed to be the Messiah, the son of Elohim. And so I want to stand with Yeshua. In my understanding of who Yeshua is, I want to stand with Yeshua. Yeshua did not say, he could have said at any point in this chapter, I am the father, I am Elohim. He could have made that point really strongly. But instead, his defense was, if the judges are called Elohim in the lesser sense and the sons of the Most High, then why do you stone me? Because I claim to be the son of Elohim. He said it out of his own mouth that he claimed to be the son of Elohim, not Elohim. So I encourage all of us to stand with Yeshua on this point. Now, I want to end with John chapter 20. And by the way, in John chapter 17, verse 3, Yeshua said his father is the only true Elohim. In John chapter 20, we see the author of the Good News account of Yochanan giving us the mission statement for the writing of the book. John chapter 20, starting with verse 30, there were indeed many other signs that Yeshua did in the presence of his taught ones which are not written in this book, many other signs and wonders. But these have been written, these accounts have been given so that you believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, the son of Elohim, and that believing you might possess life in his name. And so the author of the book of Yochanan wanted his readers to Walk away after reading his book with the belief that Yeshua is the Messiah, the son of Elohim. That's exactly what Yeshua claimed. He claimed to be the Messiah, the son of Elohim. He did not claim to be the father. He did not claim to be Elohim. After watching this video, you may have been convicted in your heart and you're asking yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us that there are some things that we must do to be saved. And so I want to give you seven things, according to Scripture, that we must be willing to do to walk the path 
to salvation. The first thing is we must believe with all of our hearts that Yeshua Messiah is the son of the living Elohim, that he died on the tree for our sins, that he was buried and raised from the dead. And then we must perform teshuvah. The word teshuvah is a Hebrew word that means to turn to the master in obedience. It's not just enough to say, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I'm sorry for my sins. But instead, you leave behind your lifestyle of sin and you embrace the word of Yah and you have a willingness and a desire then to be obedient to the commandments. And then thirdly, you must submit yourself to water immersion. When you're immersed in water, the Bible says that you are buried with Yeshua Messiah and you are raised to walk in newness of life. The scripture says that old lifestyle of sin is cut away from your life. And it's the place where the circumcision of Messiah takes place. That's the circumcision of the heart. And you receive the want to heart. In other words, you want to obey. And then that leads us to number four. You also receive the power to be obedient. And how do you do that? You pray to be filled with the set apart spirit of Yah. And so when you're filled with the Spirit of Yah, or you're immersed in the Spirit of Yah, not only are you given the power to be successful within the context of the covenant and to love Yah the way Yah wants to be loved through obedience, but you're also empowered. You're given gifts of the Spirit. You're empowered by Yah to be useful for the reign of Elohim and to go out and to receive that harvest of humanity that Yeshua has charged all of his followers to go out and receive. And then we need to read our Bibles regularly and pray continually. The scripture says the word of Yah is like milk for a baby. And so if you're just coming to belief, it's like you're a little infant in your belief and you need to grow. How are you going to grow? You need to eat. And what do you eat? You eat the Word. It's like milk for a baby. So eat regularly in the Word and pray continually, the Scripture says. Isn't it wonderful that you have a relationship with the Father and now you can have an ongoing conversation with the Father? That's a beautiful thing. And then number six, you need to find a local fellowship that you can engage with. If you can't find a local fellowship, then get connected with a ministry that's blessing you, and then stay connected. And then number seven, the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What that tells us is that salvation is not just a moment, it's not just a prayer, but instead it's a life. And so you have to live this life of walking in the will of the Father, walking in his ways, following after Yeshua and his example of obedience, loving the word, obeying the commandments, praying, and being filled with the Spirit of Yah, being led by the Spirit of Yah. And if you'll do that throughout your life, the scripture says when you get to the end of your life, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, once you start, don't quit, don't give out, don't give in, don't back up, continue in this walk. And if you'll do it and not stop, then at the end of your life or when Yeshua returns, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, if you are ready to make a commitment to these things, then why don't you send us an email at info at triumphandtruth.global and we're going to respond right back to you and we're going to celebrate with you the fact that you have believed upon Yeshua and you're ready to walk in Yeshua's example of obedience, walk in a lifestyle that pleases the Master, and we want to encourage you in it. And so send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you endure to the end, the scripture says, you will be saved. Hallelujah. Well, we've once again come to that time where we have to say shalom and Yah bless you. It is my great desire that you have been tremendously blessed by watching this video. And if so, I want to encourage you to share our videos with your family and friends and tell others about our Triumph and Truth YouTube channel as well as our wonderful online family. 
I also want to encourage you to engage on the channel because when you do, it helps us get the word out. And also invite as many people as you can to our premiere video that comes out every Arab Shabbat. That's the evening that Shabbat starts at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, 9.30 Eastern, and 6.30 Pacific. We'd love to see you in the live chat. We always have a wonderful experience. All right, as we bring this video to a conclusion, I want to speak a word of blessing over your life. So why don't you stand up where you are, lift up your hands and begin to worship as I speak these words of blessing over you. Y'all bless you and guard you. Y'all make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Y'all lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen.